you all of you for inviting me. I'm uh, very happy to uh, be given the opportunity to meet old friends and make many new friends. It's always a pleasure to come to Singapore and to participate in two interreligious um, events. So I'm a Taoist uh, priest. I um, have been very lucky and very fortunate to be fully trained in China amongst a very traditional uh, Taoist priest. And um, <clears throat> amongst them there were um, hermits also. So I, I've, I've really enjoyed the talk of the father right now. Um, and every time I would spend some time with those masters, especially the ones who were hermits in the mountain, I would come with lots of questions and they had only one answer to give me, which was, your heart is not quiet. They keep your heart quiet. And so I would go there and I'd say, but you know, I'm very sick recently. Oh, your heart is not quiet. And, uh, but you know, I don't understand this teaching of, but your heart is not quiet. And so now I have this tendency to answer to all questions or topic by the, the solution is in the heart. So I don't know why people keep inviting me to give talks because I keep repeating the same thing. You know, I've been trying to do that. So anyway, I'm still gonna um, <coughs> talk about it. Um, so the topic I was given was about the um, three treasures of Taoism, compassion, frugality, and humility. Uh, we find the definition of those um, three treasures in uh, the Tao Te Ching, chapter 67. In this chapter, Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism tells us that he has indeed three treasures, compassion, frugality, and humility. He holds them very dear and keeps them consistently with him. He adds that this is why people consider his way great. I'm going to read the chapter. The reason why, the reason everybody calls the Tao great is because there is nothing quite like it. It is exactly because it is great that there is nothing quite like it. If there were something that were consistently like it, how could it be small? I have three treasures that I hold and cherish. The first is compassion. The second is frugality. The third is not daring to put myself ahead of others, or humility. Having compassion, I can be brave. Having frugality, I can be generous. Having humility, I can take the time to perfect my abilities. Now, if I am brave without compassion, generous without frugality, go to the fore without putting my own concerns last, I might as well be dead. If you wage war without compassion, with compassion you will win. If you protect yourself, with compassion, you will be imperious. Heaven will take care of you, protecting you with compassion. And then I might as well just stop there because it's in the words of Lao Tzu and it's also well written. But still, I'll carry on a little to um, understand better what this chapter means and how important those teachings can be in our um, today's modern society. So in our modern society, where the main message diffused consistently by ways of advertisement is overconsumption and excessive competition, the usefulness of those three qualities might seem outdated and out of place. 
How can my child succeed at school if he does not compete? How can my husband rise up to the top in his field if he stays humble and compassionate? Those are the questions that a housewife might ask herself. For many, while having these qualities sounds nice, the fear of failing or falling below others by using them grasp one heart. How can we get the motivation to apply those three qualities in our life if we fear that they do not serve us well? One of the main important teachings of Taoism is that actually our original nature is good and benevolent. And we can feel that first it is important to observe within oneself that indeed the thought of having those three qualities feels nice. Why does it feel nice? Because the Taoist teachings tell us it's that indeed that kind of qualities mirror those of heaven and as such are part of our naturalness. They are the qualities of our true nature. According to Taoism, man is born good. His original nature is good. And it is unfortunately the conditioning of society that leads him down the straight path of fear, competition, and other defects. Furthermore, in Taoism, we believe that to be happy, one must stay closer as possible, as close as possible to its original nature. It is in this natural state that man feels most at ease and can find delight in life. In the Jin Jin Jin, the classic of pure and tranquility, Lao Tzu tells us that the heart spontaneously likes clarity and tranquility, but that desires meddle with it. According to such a concept, we thus are inherently born with the positive qualities of compassion, frugality, and humility. The society we live in is based on consumerism, as very early on understood the power of desires and how to make use of it to generate more money. When our stomach is full, we are naturally meant to stop eating. But then desires meddle with us. And that nice picture of that creamy dessert on the menu overstimulate our senses, especially at this time. <laughs> I can hear people's saliva. <laughs> um, so imagine that nice picture. <laughs> of that creamy dessert on the menu overstimulate our senses and makes us believe that we need more food. So there goes our frugality, victim of marketing advertisement. In the same way, we spontaneously lead towards compassion. But fear of the competitive atmosphere in the company we work for meddle with it. For example, when a colleague asks us for help on a project, our first spontaneous movement is to answer yes. But very quickly, the fear that he might get better appraisal than us, or the fear of losing our job strikes us. And there goes our compassionate nature. The list of such examples is long, and the power of desires to lead us down stray lane is not to be undervalued, nor is the power of advertisements and other marketing tools. This kind of conditioning starts 
very early on in life. At school, the youngsters are trained to be better than their classmates to get higher marks. Competition to enter a good university is getting harder every year. Helping one's friend in such an environment becomes then a risk to see the friend get a higher score than the child. That environment of competition leads the child away from his natural state of compassion and fraternity. This description is all well interesting, but then what are we to do? Changing society is not a matter of simply observing and discussing about it, and does not depend on the brief speech or a humble and Taoist such as myself. Well, we could summarize the solution by the simple sentence, change starts within one's heart. And there it goes. I told you it would come. So it's all in the heart. For people to be able to live in a society that mirror the cosmic harmony, each must first get reconnected to their innate, benevolent nature. This means overcoming the fear of lacking. It is the fear of lacking material sufficiency that very often drives one to competition, lies and malevolent actions. The fear indeed meddles with the heart. How to overcome fear? in, for example, an environment of competition, rivalry at work, or in business? Well, one should first understand that improving one's condition or career in life is not about competing against each other, but competing against one's fear, desires, and malevolent thoughts. Lao Tzu tells us, clever is the man who understands others. But even more wise is the man who knows himself and thus is able to control himself. To know oneself is to understand the mechanism of our thoughts and emotions and then be able to transcend them to reconnect to our pure and benevolent nature. The whole process of marketing is based indeed on a deep understanding of how man thinks. A car sells better when it is publicized through family pictures associated with nice music and natural background. Marketers and big companies spend a lot of time and money studying people's mind to create the best advertisement campaign and sell more products. If each and every one of us would start taking a few minutes a day observing our thoughts and our own emotion, gazing inward instead of outwards, then we would be able to appease our heart and recover the natural blissful state. A peaceful heart and a mind do not crave the latest car or the highest position in the hierarchy. True contentment is within and the mind is, as, is then able to stay still when faced with external temptations. And I would like to finish by reading you <clears throat> one um, chapter of the classic of Tranquility and Purity, also um, written by Lao Tzu, because there's something that people outside of the Taoism might not know, but Actually, in Taoism, we have more than one book. And <laughs> we always quote the Tao Te Ching or the Zhuangzi, but we, also, we have a whole canon of 1,700 books. And I think it's nice sometimes to quote from those books. So I will quote from the classic of Tranquility and Purity. It tells us, the human spirit is fond of purity but the mind disturbs it. The human mind is fond of stillness, but desires meddle with it. If the mind can be constant without desires, then the mind will become still. 
When the mind has settled, then the spirit will be pure. Naturally, all the desires will not be born, and the poisons will perish. Those who cannot accomplish this have their minds not yet settled, and are not yet rid of desires. Therefore, it is impossible for living beings to attain the true Tao with deluded minds. Since they have deluded minds, their spirits are frightened. Because their spirits are frightened, they are attached to the myriad phenomena. Because they are attached to the myriad phenomena, they give birth to greedy seeking. Due to the birth of this greedy seeking, <coughs> they encounter confusion and anger. So, briefly to conclude, I would like to say that compassion, frugality and humility are indeed the three treasures of Taoism more so because they are the reflection of the innate nature of man on the clear water of a tranquil mind. While greedy companies entice us to ever more consume and compete by playing on our fear and desires, the simple method of turning inwards would bring a halt to their strategies. A tranquil heart feels complete and content by itself. Tranquility appears through inner observation and meditations. These, techni these techniques do not belong to Taoism alone. Most religions, including Christianity, like we've just seen actually by the Father who presented the different techniques of meditation and prayers, those techniques appease and bring peace to the heart. If religion such as Taoism and Christianity, are to participate into solving the problem of that, of that society is now facing, they should bring forward their ancestral techniques of appeasing the mind and comforting the heart of each individual. Thank you.